there is brand new uh, remake news. It's quite good. Pretty much the, the directors and creative leads of the game saying how intermission directly leads towards uh, the sequel, Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Two. We already had a couple of big predictions on this when we were playing the game. It was my prediction that they were ut utilizing the Sonan stuff, where you actually use him in battle and essentially do dual techs with this guy. To me, it seemed like this was a primer for the next game. This L2 button isn't used a whole bunch in uh, in, in a lot of combat in 7 Remake Vanilla. So to me, I was like, oh man, like I think Sonan's abilities and the way you team up with him is probably going to be utilized into the whole party a bit later on because the bigger issue with FF7 Remake Part 2 is that the party is a lot bigger. And I think they're going to try to get rid of the idea of the PHS, you know? I think the PHS is kind of archaic. You're on your journey together, but a whole bunch of your other party members are just sitting along doing nothing, right? We have Sid and Cloud and Tifa doing their thing, but now... Barrett, Kate Sith, and Red 13, and Vincent are just sitting in a room? Or they're in a car somewhere? Like, that's kind of the stuff that they have to tackle with 7 Remake Part 2, because, like, the whole cast has to be on this journey together. PHS was like a cell phone you had in the old game, and you used the cell phone to call in your other party members to replace people in there. So and now at this point, it's like, oh, so how do you alleviate that? Well, clearly you have to make it seem like everyone is on the journey together, especially in combat. You can have your main characters, but you can do Sonon-type stuff where you can call in team attacks with other characters that are not being actively played on screen. That to me was like my entire opportunity of playing this game felt like, oh, they are totally, they are totally gonna do that for the next part. And I think they actually give some hints at it in here. So focusing on the quotes parts, uh, the quoted elements of the game. From the perspective, I'm rather satisfying with the with the, the final form in which a strategic element of the command based battle from the original coexists with the real time action oriented battle. So they're not going to get rid of like the ATB action element in the next game. And Hamaguchi is the new director of um, Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Two. He's like the lead director now. He was the co-director of the previous game. He says, additionally, with intermission, there's another element introduced combo moves where Yuffie and Sonan team up making for a different feel and battle strategy, which is like dual techs. I would like to leverage these, including other elements we tried out in intermission in our next story. So they're already revealing the fact that, hey, remember that cool stuff you can do with Sonan? Yes, you're gonna be able to dual tech with like Cloud and Tifa. You'll be able to dual tech with like Red 13 and Barrett. That is what this is like alluring towards in my opinion, not just the not just like one character or something like that. To me, it seems like the whole party will team up with each other to do cool shit. And that sounds awesome. <laughs> that sounds ridiculously cool because it was easily one of the best elements of the combat slash gameplay and in intermission. Talking about Advent Children characters being and like Dirge of Cerberus characters being added into uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake. And he says that the world of Seven was vastly expanded through multiple works that followed the original game. Uh, from Toriyama. We do want to make a culmination of the FF7 related works created up to this point, and there are characters that I too did not know of, but this is the same with Cloud and company as well, that they don't know about it, so they have ways to reintroduce them. This makes sense with the way that they, they sort of tackled Weiss and Crisis Core characters and things like that in the main story, like acknowledging their existence without making them like really front and center. And I'm, I'm kind of okay with that, as long as, you know, Gact isn't sitting right, right off screen eating a dumb apple. And he says, for unfamiliar enemies like Weiss or Nero, I think being able to convey that they have this kind of deep darkness about them is plenty. Hey, nice, that's all you need. Toriyama said, at the same time, those who are familiar with them can make a stronger connection to the overarching seven world by having them appear in the narrative as they are in their respective source material. It's like they get it. It's like they absolute get it. You can reference this stuff, right? You can show the fact that this world alongside this remake exists. Talking about Kunsol, talking about G-Cells, things like that. Do they need to be huge story elements put into the game? No, their stories are told in the compilation games. If you want to learn more about that, go play the compilation games. Speaking to my heart, these devs are. It's insane. It's absolutely insane how many opportunities the FF7 devs get to screw up this game. How many opportunities they have to absolutely fuck this shit up for, for the first game, the DLC, and the future parts. But every single time you hear them like talk about certain things that seem really like, uh, so what are you going to do about that? They either completely 
destroy it. They like, they do it so well, it's ridiculous, or they handle it in a way that doesn't completely ignore those elements from previous games, but just keeps them in perspective because that's not about their story anymore. This game is about obviously the FF7 main story. It's almost like they're taking my advice. You know what, dude? It just, to me, it just seems like these devs have a good stable head on their shoulders, right? I think their approach to how they are Com combining elements of Final Fantasy VII all into one game, I think is really level-headed and doesn't come across as like super aggressive in some ways or another. So, moving on. If this were Vincent, another optional character, he would have been sleeping in a coffin in a Shinra mansion, so we weren't able to move him around. But Yuffie was traveling the world as a Materia Hunter in the original, and by having Yuffie infiltrate Midgar as part of her travel, she can experience the same incidents Cloud and company were experiencing, depicting the same incidences from a different perspective. And to be honest, that makes sense because where's the first place that you run into Yuffie in the original game? As soon as you're out of like crystal caves, you start running through some forests and then Yuffie's there. And then you get her cutscene if if you if you happen to run into her uh, in the forest. So it makes a lot of sense. Like why is Yuffie completely across the continent? Way, 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 way further from Wutai, almost like the complete continent across the world from Wutai. Why do you discover her here? It's almost like the game's insinuating that she's already a spy and she's already, you know, putzing around this part of the world doing shit. Oh, that's a pretty good call. That uh, She was actually in Midgar when the plate fell and gets to see the insane travesty slash horror that is what Shinra's doing to people. Mentioning the fact that Yuffie's a cheerful, energetic young lady and she'll make an appearance after getting over the tragic experience and in intermission. So I believe her encounter with Cloud and his allies will be that much more appealing. Also, Wutai uh, was placed in a more important position as the opposing force against Shinra. This was a big... This was something that was like hinted at in the original game, but wasn't really like a main plot line that Shinra's at war with Wu Tai. Like it's mentioned a couple of times, but it's not a huge plot element throughout the previous game. So by having groups that oppose Shinra, not just Avalanche, take a more prominent role, I believe we can create an even more suspenseful story. Yeah, and I think this is a this is a super good call because now uh, Avalanche, Yuffie, and the main crew of the game all have really similar things they're fighting for. They're all like way different characters with different motivations. However, the way that Shinra has had an impact on the world and the planet and the people on the planet is substantial. And that's what the whole party is. The whole party is people that have been like absolutely screwed over by Shinra. And they're integrating that even more than before because it wasn't super clear in the original game that Yuffie was really affected by the events of what Shinra is doing other than the fact that they were in a war with Shinra at some point and that Wutai was turned into a, a tourist site, right? It became like a tourist site and she was pissed off about that. Well, she just loved Materia. This just gives me more kind of confirmation that Hamaguchi, which is the new director of the game, was the previous co-director of Final Fantasy VII Remake Part One. really gets it. I think this dude gets it. And so much to the point where a lot of his influence and a lot of his uh, direction from the previous, uh, the previous game is starting to show. It makes me feel like he had a lot more to do with part one than possibly even Nomura did in some ways, as far as like execution and shit like that. So I don't know, man. It feels like a lot of the bigger higher ups at Square Enix right now have a really, especially the Final Fantasy teams, have a really good concept of what people want out of these future games and stuff like that. Yeah, he gets it and is getting it and is doing a lot with it that is pretty sick. <laughs>